Our analyst finished his career ranked fourth on the University of Wisconsin's all-time scoring list. It's a pleasure to welcome Chuck Nagel. Thanks, Mike. The state's top eight Division I, Division II, and Division III community colleges qualify for the Maryland JUCO tournament. Now, just to be clear, the Maryland JUCO tournament champion does not receive an automatic bid to the national tournament. That will be decided in the Division I Region 20 tournament for Baltimore City and in the Division II Region 20 tournament for Howard. This is a rematch of last year's Maryland JUCO championship. Baltimore City scored a decisive win over Howard in last year's final. Howard enters the game with a 13-10 record. They split the regular season series with Baltimore City. The Dragons are on a two-game win streak. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Howard? As you mentioned, this is the third meeting between the two teams this year, Mike, and uh, both teams know each other very well, meaning Howard knows the Dragons, or Howard knows the Panthers very well. Howard's going to have to be very aggressive once again tonight on both sides of the ball. Knowing Baltimore City likes to shoot the long ball, I would suspect Coach Dull will change defenses quite a few times throughout the game trying to limit Baltimore City's open shots. The deciding factor, though, could be Willie Key, the great offensive guard for, uh, for Howard. He handles the ball 80% of the time and uh, could be the one to make this, this game go for Howard. Baltimore City enters the game with a 15-10 record. The Panthers have been a tough matchup for the Dragons. Howard has only two wins over Baltimore City in the past seven years. History has proven that February and March belong to the Panthers. Baltimore City has won two Maryland JUCO tournament titles and two Region 20 titles dating back to 2010. The Panthers are on a six-game win streak entering the tournament. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Baltimore City? Baltimore City, again, Mike, it's the third game, so they likewise know what to expect from Howard. Baltimore City will spread out the defense, they'll spread out their offense, look for the three-point shot, and they'll go to the boards very aggressively. They say you live or die on the long ball. That could be the case tonight with Baltimore City. Howard takes on Baltimore City in a rematch of last year's Maryland JUCO final. Let's go to the highlight. First half, Willie Key brings it up for Howard. Great penetration from Key to Gaskins. This has been the theme of the Dragon offense this year. Drive, dish, score. Trey Thomas to Brian Kelly. Kelly driving with the dish. Dragons in a 2-3 zone. Quick ball movement by Baltimore City, and they get the open three. Howard turned it over on the other end. Wilmer Johnson now to Thomas. Once again, great ball movement. They find the open man, another three. Thomas scores nine in the first 10 minutes. Baltimore City on a 17-6 run. Kelly takes it up, passes it out to Keon Press. Press knocks down the three and an eight-point lead for the Panthers. Next Howard possession, Willie Key scans the floor. Vasquez coming from the baseline, takes the pass, squares up, hits the three, puts Howard within five. But now you see Howard very relaxed coming down the floor. Baltimore City needs two passes to go 94 feet. Easy layup. They're back up by seven. Next possession for the Panthers. Thomas goes to Johnson. Dragon still in his own defense. Baltimore City using skip passes to knock down the shot. Dragons here might think about changing up their defense. Baltimore City's last six possessions, six field goals, six assists, and three three-pointers. Now the Dragons have gone man-to-man, -man, but here Josh Jones doesn't stay in front of his man, allows Press easy access to the paint for the jumper. Dragons still man-to-man, -man, but they just don't seem to keep up with the alert passing by Baltimore City, and once again, they get an excellent look from the corner. We have seen this before. Keon Press scores 14 points off the bench in the first half. Baltimore City shooting five for six from three-point range, and they lead by eight at the half. Second half, Brandon Roberson to Key. Panthers applying three-quarter court defense. Willie Key does what he does best, drives down the lane for the reverse layup. Dragons with the ball out of bounds. Pass comes in to Jamal Eggleson. Hands it off, floats back to the corner. Two dribbles, steps up, nails the jumper. Very smart play by Eggleson. Howard has outscored Baltimore City 11-4 over the last four minutes. Robert Goodwin gives it to Eggleston. Gets to the low post. It's no good. Wosu with the rebound. Great second effort by Wosu. Keeps the ball alive. Brings Howard to within three. Eight minutes remaining now. Baltimore City milking the clock. Trey Thomas to Brian Kelly. Back to Thomas from downtown. A season-high 22-point night for the freshman out of Bowie. This basket made easy and possible by number 12. Knowing the Dragons are in his zone, Kyrie Hunt-Hawkins steps in front of the wing to set a pick on Goodwin. 
allowing Thomas to hit the big bucket, which puts Baltimore City back up by six. 6.20 remaining and a five-point lead for the Panthers. Dragons now seem to be much more active on defense, but here Goodwin decides to double-team the men in the corner, allowing Thomas the wide-open three. I'm sure Coach Dell on the bench telling his players not just to be active on defense, but to play smart and stay with your man. 3.29 to play, Howard down by eight. Baltimore City now in a man-to-man -man defense, and the best way to beat this defense is to be patient, find the open man, which they do, Wosu, and he scores. 12-point game for Wosu, four for six from the field, and we have a two-possession game. Other end of the floor now, Thomas up against Vasquez. Thomas goes baseline, can't get it to fall, Wosu secures the rebound and sends it up to Goodwin. Here comes Howard in transition. Vasquez for three. No good, Gaskins gets a hand on it. Vasquez gets it back for Howard, absorbs the contact and draws the foul. The all region 20 guard goes on to convert both free throws and we have a four point game. 257 remaining, Thomas inbounds to Dewan Dent, passes it to Kelly, three on one break, but they're not on the same page and Coach Dahl is fired up. Howard looking to make it a one possession game. Kelly comes out, forces the issue on defense, and Johnson with the interception ahead to Thomas. And Vasquez sends him to the line, missed opportunity for the Dragon. Thomas made one of two, 2.27 on the clock. Wosu penetrates, kicks it out to Key. His shot's no good, but Wosu pulls down the rebound. The putback is off the mark. Gaskins fights for the ball, and he draws the foul. It's on John Majors, who fouls out on the play. We didn't see much of Major's work in the highlight, but he had 10 points and led all players with nine rebounds. Gaskins made one of two, 219 now on the clock and a four point deficit for Howard. Dent moves it to Kelly. He storms the lane. Robert Goodwin plants his feet, sacrifices the body and takes the charge. The freshman out of Baltimore's toughness is on display down the stretch. Howard trailed by as much as 10 on three separate occasions in the second half and they're back to within four. Wosu penetrates to Goodwin. Drains the three, it's a one point game. Dragons once again full court press. The foul here called on Vasquez who gets caught holding Wilmer Johnson. Johnson converted both free throws, extends the lead to three. Robert Goodwin behind his back to Gaskins for the finish, one point game. Goodwin with his seventh assist on the night ties a season high with his biggest one of the year. 107 remaining, Kelly up against Vasquez. The Panthers work it to Johnson. Nice first step, he gets free and buries a dagger. Baltimore City now leads by three. Other end of the floor now, 51 seconds. Willie Key, he wants the ball. Goes to his right, draws contact and gets to the free throw line. Willie Key at the line, he's three of four at the line tonight. The first one makes it a two-point game. Key now looking to bring his team within one. The shot is no good. Gaskins gets a hand on it. Willie Key rips it away from Thomas and wins it back for Howard. Coach Dull runs over and calls a timeout with 39 seconds. After the timeout, Key goes to Eggleston. Back to Key who draws two, frees up Goodwin. No, but Gaskins is there. The putback is good and he ties the game. Howard's big men have certainly improved their work on the offensive board with key second effort baskets. 17 seconds remaining and Baltimore City gets the ball into Kelly who's up against Josh Jones. Kelly holds the ball waiting for that last shot. Now he works Kelly Johnson in the corner. And an official calls a foul on Goodwin. Johnson will head to the line for three free throws with two seconds on the clock. Johnson went down. Chuck, what do you think of the call? This is a very tough call to make with under three seconds to go. However, when you have two defenders in the face of the shooter, especially from this distance, and the shooter falls backward after the shot, you have to think the referee is going to make the call. Johnson hits his first two free throws. Here's number three. 83-80, Baltimore City with two seconds remaining. Howard inbounded it and called timeout. With 1.5 seconds on the clock, the Dragons will have time for a catch and shoot 
hoping for a good look at the basket. He goes to Vasquez, who can't convert the long range three. Baltimore City holds off Howard. The Panthers move on to the Maryland Juco semifinal. 83-80 is your final. Okay, welcome back to Dragon Sports Radio. I'm Louis Garcia, and I'm joined by the coach of the HCC men's basketball team, Jay Dull. Welcome, Coach. Thank you much. Coach Dull's Dragons coming off a close loss to Baltimore City in the Maryland Juco Conference Tournament. Coach, your team got itself in a hole, but made a valiant comeback to tie the game late in the, late in the second half, but a, but a foul on a three-point shot was your team's downfall. <laughs> how do you, how do you, how, what was your takeaway coming out of that game? You know, and to, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I felt pretty good about my team at that point um, because, like you said, we did, we did come back from a deficit. Um, we had a lot of fight and a lot of fire. Guys played hard. And everybody who knows me knows that that's, that's my whole gauge of things. Is, you know, if you play hard with effort, you let the chips fall where they may at the end of the game. And it's just unfortunate that it came down to a call with two seconds left on a foul. And they shoot three free throws to win the game. 